It's that time of year again, folks. Winter is coming. And that can mean only one thing at Pedalbox. It means yeah. the engine's coming out it again. It means the engine is coming out of, of this project. And I don't know why this keeps happening in winter. It's, it's really miserable. Um, My but, guess is we do all the nice, happy jobs in summer. When it's yeah. bright, we do body work and all the stuff that needs warmth. Yeah. And then when winter comes around, we're back to mechanicals. Yeah. That's my guess. I, get, I mean, it's sensible in that respect that, yeah, bodywork really needs the summer for, uh, for maximum effectiveness, which is why we're currently doing it at the end of November or yeah. have been finishing bits off. But now is time for the engine to come out so we can finish up a bunch of jobs that we need to do, including putting in the window in the firewall so we can get that in. Uh, and we also need to link the header tank to this side of the engine block, which means a big pipe that goes all the way around the back. However, yeah, we had previously installed the header tank. Obviously, there's a couple of previous episodes where you can see us installing it here, where you can see it's been sat there for a long time. But the installation, it was kind of a best guess because we didn't have the engine bay cover on yet. We didn't know how much clearance we had. So we played very, very conservatively, mounted it at, at a height that we thought might be high enough, but would definitely not be too high for the, uh, for the cover. Unfortunately, it was too low. We're about two inches uh, too low on the header tank for it to actually guarantee a feed into the top of the engine. So we're gonna have to relocate that. That's the first thing that we're gonna tackle. Yeah. And there's a few other things that all seem very, very unrelated to each other. So the episodes <laughs> are gonna be a bit wobbly from now on. But yeah. it's all stuff that is basically made a lot easier by having the engine out. So we're gonna get the window in, as Abe mentioned. I think we're planning to build the rear diffuser. Now that we've got the exhaust and everything else, we've got loads yeah. of access in there to attach the frame. And hopefully, as Chris is leaving in three days, we can get the, all of this done and the engine back in before he leaves, because it is a pig to do on your own. Well, now that we've done so much work on other bits of the car, we've got more of the engine in, more of the boost system in, the firewall's more complete, and we've got the engine bay cover on, we've got a much better idea of how high is up as far as like where we can put stuff and what spaces are free. So instead of lifting this thing up, because previously it was mounted around here, and nice, it's kind of out the way, you're not gonna like hit it or anything and risk damaging it while it's in the car. But if we lifted it up to get the clearance we need, it's now kind of in a space where, you know, we can easily hit it and potentially damage it, all that sort of fun stuff. So rather than doing that, which, in fairness, might still hit the frame in here, might or might not. We're instead gonna punt it all the way forward onto the firewall up there. Now that we know we've got all this space free up here, we're gonna have an air filter up here, but we know that that's out of the way as well. So we can definitely make that work. We've jumped ahead a little bit because getting the window in was kind of a nightmare. Now, we'd love to show you how it all went together, but really with how much of a pain it was to get it aligned and get all the different seals around it and get it attached to the body and everything, it's not coming back out. Like, we're not going to give you a demo unless we've got some spare left that we can do on the picnic table. But nonetheless, we are getting there slowly. Uh, it's taken us probably about an hour and a half or so to get to this point and progress on getting this last little bead of seal in. This is the one that actually pushes the seal out and anchors everything in place. This is the really, really slow part. We thought it was difficult getting the plexi in, but this is really kicking our asses. Well, to be honest, putting the window in is kind of beating all the morale out of us. So to try and get a win, and while we've got some light to focus on doing it, we're gonna weld in the relocated uh, expansion tank bracket. It's exactly the same as it used to be. We've had to cut it off around there and uh, weld it back together in a couple of places, but it's pretty much the same thing that you remember, remember us making from last time. So it fits around the bottom of the expansion tank. It's gonna weld it on up here instead, and we should be pretty much good. Well, the welding didn't distract us for nearly as long as I like it. it only took about 30 seconds or a minute. So we're gonna get on with assembly. Here's our little bracket that bolts onto the body. Just gonna clamp this up in place. Cool. Well, that's all back in place. So we can now pop the expansion tank back in and get, drop the bolts through to hold it all together. And that's that, one distraction dealt with. Now, next up, we have gotta work on plumbing, obviously hooking it up to the engine itself, which was what the whole point of this exercise was. But without the engine in, we don't really know exactly where the other end is gonna be. We do know that on the front of the engine up here, we've got some bolt holes that we can put a nice clip onto to support the hose. So we don't need to put any more of our own brackets and supports on it. So we might need a couple of elbows on here or something to deal with some of the tight turns around the boost pipes if we need to clear anything here, but we'll deal with all of that when the engine's back in. Now putting this seal in has been an absolute nightmare and I'm gonna do my best to describe to you the problem that we had and how the seal works. 
So the seal is a T section into which you put the two sheets. We have the perspex going in one side and the sheet metal going in the other side. There's a half round of rubber on the top and two quarter rounds on the bottom. And those two quarter rounds allow you to put the seal in, fit your plate in, and then you jam the middle of them together with this uh, extra T shaped piece that fits in between the middle of the seal. And fitting that is so difficult to do. We were trying to do it without using any lubricant because we thought it might either pop back out or it might not uh, evaporate. And in the end, we ended up using the uh, WD-40, well, this is WD-40 brand, um, PTFE lubricant. It's got a nice little spray nozzle that goes in so you can fit underneath where you've already inserted the, um, the middle section. And the other big problem that we had, we thought we'd get away with, with this, it turns out our perspex is 7 mil thick, not 6 mil, and the only, uh, the only seal we could get was a 1 to 3 mil and a 6 mil seal on this side. And we were hoping to use a little bit of the flexibility of the um, panels at the sheet metal side, where it was only 1, one millimeter of steel to get away with the, um, the extra thickness of the perspex side. And ultimately, we didn't. It was, it was terrible. It was an absolute chore to get it done. Uh, fitting this bottom section, we did that without using the PTFE lubricant, and that took the better part of an hour to an hour and a half. Um, I attempted to get this side in, and that took me an hour before I just gave up and ended up then using the lubricant. And that worked way, way better. And actually doing this side took about half an hour. Getting across here behind the, um, behind the intake scoop, that again took about an hour or so, maybe even a little bit less. It wasn't as bad. And then fitting the final one was very difficult because we were putting so much force on the perspex to push it. It was actually popping out the other side. So that was a little bit more of a fight. We had to have a couple of goes at that. But it did all work in the end, and I'm so grateful, and hopefully I will never have to remove this window ever again. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure that you like it. Comment down below what you would do differently, whether or not there is a better tool for doing this that you know of and you could link us to for when we inevitably have to do this again. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow us on all of the usual social media channels. And if you want to, you can help support the channel in buying more materials and more welding gas and everything else by going to shop.pedalbox.show, where you can buy t-shirts and all of the other merch that we have, although given it's winter, you probably want the long sleeve shirts and the uh, hoodies. You can also support us on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show from as little as a dollar a month and all of the tiers get you a little bit of discount in our shop going up obviously as you go up the tiers and they also get access to each episode earlier than they go live on YouTube. Once again thanks very much for watching, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and we will see you next time where we hopefully get closer to putting the engine back in.